Okay, so let's take a look at how to analyze um, a rational uh, expression like the one we're showing here and to try to figure out where the, um, the asymptotes are and to how to look at whether um, the lines cross the asymptotes and what are the actual critical things we need to do to figure out how to graph this. Okay, so the very first thing that I would do in a question like this is let's um, look at finding the vertical asymptotes first. Okay, so we'll just put here vertical asymptote. And we know the vertical asymptote is where the function um, has the denominator that is not defined. So the vertical asymptote we know is going to be equal to where x plus 4 is equal to 0. So x plus 4 is equal to 0. When we rearrange and solve for this equation, we're going to see x is equal to negative 4. So this is going to be the line that we are going to draw that is going to create the vertical asymptote for the um, for this function. Okay, so that's going to be a, the vertical line. The second step that we need to look at doing here is we need to find or calculate the way that we can be sure we're actually getting the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote is basically a line that is going to be equal to y is equal to some value k. All right, and the, the goal here is to how to figure out what k is um, if we put infinitely large numbers into this function. So the way that I'm going to look at this is we're going to use this thing called the limit notation. And I'm going to use a little algebra technique to kind of simplify this so that we can um, get this um, horizontal asymptote calculated um, correctly in one step here. So I am going to write this as the limit as x goes to infinity. Okay, And what we're looking at evaluating the limit on here is this function, 3x over x plus 4. Uh, minus 5. And the minus 5 is on the outside. So there's a technique that you can use um, to pull out the values of the of x so that we can try to isolate what's left over in the in the equation. And essentially it's like factoring. So if you think about this, we have 3 times x on the top. If there was a way that we could cancel the x's out, the x on the top with an x on the bottom, um, that would simplify this part of this expression. Okay, so the way that we can do that is we can do it as follows here. So I'm going to have 3x on the top, and I'm going to leave it like that. 3, that's 3 times x. And what I'm going to do on, on the denominator here is I'm going to factor out an x. So that means I'm going to take an x out, and we're going to write another expression here, where which is equivalent to one of the factors of it. So x comes out of x itself one time, okay, and then what happens when we try to take an x out of the, the number 4? Well, the way that we would express that is we're going to show it as a fraction, 4 over x, okay, and then the 5 is just trailed off on the side. Okay, so this does two things for us. This produces a factor of x on the outside that we can then cancel with this one here. So the top and the bottom x's will cancel. And then we can also look at the limit as saying, okay, if I have an infinitely large number, and then I take this expression here, 4 divided by this infinitely large number. Okay, so think of it as like being 4 divided by a million. So what does that number tend to go towards? Okay, so this expression, this little fraction here, tends to go to 0. So then my limit can be then expressed a little bit cleaner here, where I don't have x's anymore. I'm just going to have a 3 on the top. Um, this bottom x is going to cancel with that top x. I'm going to have this number 1 here. And 4 over x, when x is really large numbers, is just going to tend to 0 itself. Okay, so then my expression becomes this. So my limit is going to be as x goes to infinity is just going to be equal to 3 over 1 minus 5, or 3 minus 5, which is equal to negative 2. So that is going to be our value for our horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this is just a technique that actually works um, works pretty much in every case. It's uh, when you have rational expressions, and it's a way to 
um, calculate more directly the horizontal asymptote um, rather than think about it intuitively when you just have the original equation, 3x over x plus 4. And you say, well, what happens if x is very, very large numbers? Because then you have something called, three, you have something like 3 times infinity over infinity plus 4. Okay, and so intuitively, what does that mean? You have an infinite number divided by an infinite number. One is 3 times bigger, so the idea is that, well, it would tend towards the number 3, um, and then you can go minus five, and that's how you you try to intuitively get the number two. But this is a way that is just almost a little bit like the opposite. It lets you cancel out terms, and then lets you um, create a fraction that we know is going to go go towards zero. Okay, so our horizontal asymptote here is going to be uh, at negative two. Okay, and then the third part of this thing is once we've we've got our vertical asymptote and we have a horizontal asymptote now we want to know is how does the how can you determine if the rational function crosses the horizontal um, asymptote because that's one of the rules or one of the rules that we know about is that vertical asymptotes are never crossed but it's possible for a horizontal asymptote to cross so the question is does the function, okay, and we're talking about the rational function, cross the horizontal asymptote, okay, and how can you tell? So the idea behind that is like, if here's my tiny little graph, okay, and I have this horizontal asymptote here at negative 2, okay, and then I have some curve, and I need to know, it could be like this, right, it's, how do I know if that point is going to cross um, negative 2 in this case. So the easy way to, to do this or to do a check is to take the original expression, the original function, 3x over x plus 4 minus 5, and set it to be equal to our horizontal asymptote. So we know our horizontal asymptote is negative 2, so let's just set those two to be together. Okay, And then the idea is that if we can find a value x, that satisfies this equation so, so that it is equal to negative 2, then we know that it is crossing the horizontal asymptote. And if this, if we cannot find a, a value for x that satisfies this, then we know that this function does not cross the asymptote. So we can set it up this way, and then we just uh, will do some simple algebra here to solve this. So 3x over x plus 4. I'm going to bring the 5 over to the right side, so I'm going to add 5. So it's going to be equal to negative 2 plus 5. And then this is going to give us 3 over x. x plus 4 is equal to 3. And then we need to just rearrange this and solve for x. So remember, this is like 3 over 1, right? So we can just do a basic cross multiplication to try to isolate our x terms. So 3x times 1 is 3x. And this is going to give you 3 times x plus 4. And we've got to keep going until we see what happens here. So all of a sudden I get to this equation, and then I've got 3x is equal to 3x plus, um, it's actually not 4, it's supposed to be 12. Okay, and then if I move the 3x over to one side, I'm going to get 0x is equal to 12. Okay, and then all of a sudden, I really don't have any x's anymore. So, not 0x, but just really 0. Okay, because it goes away. So, what does this mean? Okay, this means there's no solution. This means that we never can find a value of x such that it is going to ever equal um, negative 2 or the horizontal asymptote. So, there's no solution. Okay, and because this is not a true statement, 0 equals 12, that, that's, that's not correct as a, as a mathematical statement. So there's no solution, and therefore, so three dots, okay, does not cross the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that gives us a hint of how we're going to be able to draw the graph. Okay, and then the next thing... We're still gathering a little bit of information here about our about this equation. So the next thing we need to do is we need to look at our intercepts here. So 
we're going to look, find our y inter, or x intercept, say. So if we're going to find the x intercept, we're going to set y to be equal to 0. Okay, so then this is going to be 0 is equal to 3 over x, x plus 4 minus 5. So 5 is equal to 3x over x plus 4. Okay, and this will cross multiply again, work this out. So this is going to give me 5x plus 20 is equal to 3x. And um, we can subtract 3x and move the 20 over to the other side. So this is going to give us 2x is equal to negative 20. So x is equal to negative 10. So one of our points here is going to be the x-intercept here is going to give you negative 10 and 0. Okay, and then we should find then our y-intercept, okay, which is where we set x to 0. Okay, so that means y is equal to 3 times 0, all over 0 plus 4 minus 5. So this is going to 3 times 0 is 0. So this is going to be equal to negative 5. So then our y-intercept here is going to be 0 and negative 5. Okay, so now we have a bunch of information here that we can use to try to plot our graph. So we know our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. We know that this function does not cross the horizontal um, asymptote. And we know that our horizontal asymptote is at negative 2 and we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. Okay, so if I was going to plot this graph here, what I would do is we'll draw our, our vertical asymptote in first, so at x is equal to negative 4. So I'll just put a, a dashed line right here. Okay, and then we know we have a horizontal asymptote at negative 2. So I'll do the other dashed line here. Okay, so this is negative 2, and this is going to be negative 4. So I'm going to just label that so we kind of remember what they are. Okay, and then we know that it's not going to cross the horizontal asymptote. So nothing that we've been able to calculate here shows that it's going to cross. And then we have our two points at negative 10, 0. So this is pretty far away here. So this is 4... This is going to be 8 and 10, so right on the edge here, that's where it crosses our x-axis, that's our x-intercept, and our y-intercept is at 0, negative 5, so 2, 4, 5, so right here. Okay, so what do you want to do at this point, is you need to determine the shape of the curve. So we've got asymptotes, so we know that the line is going to approach the asymptotes, and we know it's never going to cross the vertical asymptote. And we also now know that we don't have a solution for it to cross the horizontal asymptote. So the the intercepts are kind of like critical points on, on the curve, you could say. So if we were to test a couple of points, and the easiest way to do it is just maybe just make a table of values. I'll just go down here a little bit, and what we'll do is we'll um, do something like table of values here where I'm going to have x and y. But what I really want to determine for y is I want to kind of know what the sign of the number is. Okay, so we know that, we know it's, cro we know it's 0, or we know at negative 10 it's going to be 0. So what would happen if we tested a negative 11? Okay, and then what would this sign of the y value be? Okay, we could try to work it out, or you can plug it into the original equation to work it out. But we know that the sign at negative 11, y is going to be a negative value. Okay, so it's just going to be a minus value. That means it's going to be below the y-axis. Okay, and then we know we can test another point. We know 10 is going to be where it's going to be 0. But then we can test uh, another point like, say, negative 5. Let's get closer to the asymptote, okay, because we know it's at 4. So if we were going to test negative 5, okay, we would see that the sign of that, um, the y value is positive. So that means 
it has gone through the Y axis or the X axis, sorry, and then is becoming positive and stays positive. So it doesn't turn down. So the shape of the curve would just simply be something approximately like this. We don't know the exact values because we'd have to plot more. But we know it's negative past um, negative 10, so it's going to go negative. But, and we also know it's never going to cross the horizontal axis or the uh, horizontal asymptote, so it's going to just approach it at some point. And then past the y the x-intercept, it's going to become positive, and then we know it can never cross the vertical asymptote. So that's one side of the curve that we could sketch. Okay, and then the other side is we've got our other points. So we know from negative 4, past negative 4, so we could try something like um, negative 1. Okay, what is the sign of y in that term there? Well, we, we're going to see that it's going to end up being negative because we're testing negative 1, okay, is here, and it's negative, and we know it's going to cross the axis here. So that means it's still going to be below this point here. Okay, so something like this for the curve. Okay, and then again, how do we know it never just shoots over the horizontal asymptote? Well, because we know the function has never got a solution for it. So this curve is going to have to just, it's always going to be negative, but it's going to approach the horizontal asymptote but never cross it. So our curve would be looking something like that, where we have our, we've got our asymptotes set up so we can describe sort of the position of the curve. We know where our intercepts are, the x and y intercepts, and then what we can do is just test points around those to see whether we're above or below the axes here. So we any point we put in here, um, okay, this is zero, right? Any point we put in here from um, greater than negative four, like negative three, negative two, one, zero, any of those points here, the y value is always going to still be negative. But over here, it's going to change. It's going to be negative um, when it's um, less than negative 10. But as soon as it gets bigger, like negative 9, negative 8, negative, um, you know, up to negative 5, it's going to start to increase and it's going to be more positive because uh, we see the sign of that number there being positive. And we also know it's never going to cross the asymptote. Vertically, So this is our best case that we can try to do for, for graphing the curve. Okay, so that's how um, I would look at doing question A if we're going to analyze it. Um, find vertical asymptotes. Okay, find the horizontal asymptotes. Um, and try to, you can use this limit technique where um, you divide out a, a factor to try to accurately um, solve for the limit. Do the test by applying the equation equal to the uh, horizontal asymptote to see if the solution actually is valid or if there is a solution for that. Um, that's going to tell you whether it crosses the axis or not at some point. And then identify your intercepts and then try to figure out then just from those points just to see whether you're above and below the different axes.